Hi everyone and welcome to Music at Your Library. We are on Treaty 6 territory in the homeland of the Métis. We are presenting this program today with the support of the Saskatchewan Arts Board and the Saskatoon Public Library. My name is Véronique Mathieu, I'm a violinist and a professor at the University of Saskatchewan. I am here today with Erin Brophy, who is an oboist here in Saskatoon. My name is Erin Brophy and I play the oboe. Now I'm here to talk to you today about this instrument and a little bit about how music works. And the first thing I'd like to start with is something called vibration. Now vibration is how we create music or create sound. And a game that I like to play when I'm talking to students is how do I make my instrument vibrate? So, I'm going to ask some questions and then I'm going to demonstrate some things that can work to make a vibration. So often I'll ask people, how do I make my instrument vibrate? And someone might say, well, you hit it like a percussion instrument. And I have to say that does not sound like music at all. Some people suggest that perhaps I need to blow into my instrument. I mean, the oboe is a wind instrument, of course, so maybe I should blow. So let me blow into it and let's see if that makes a sound. Well, that sounded a lot like wind, but not necessarily music. What I need is to create a vibration. And in order to do that on the oboe, I have something really special. It's this thing. This is called a reed. Now, this is a special kind of reed. It's a double reed. And it is what I blow against in order to create vibration. Let me show you. So that is a vibration, now, but it doesn't sound a lot like music, does it? So I need to put this reed into the oboe in order to create music. And when I do so, this is what it sounds like. And that is the beautiful oboe. Now this reed that I told you about, it's a double reed. And I'm gonna guess that some people watching this video have actually played a double reed before. Now hang on, you probably don't believe me, but the oboe reed is made of a grass. In fact, it's made of a grass called bamboo. This is a rondus donax. It's a piece of bamboo that you might see in bamboo furniture or is the thing that it makes really soft clothes and sheets. And I take this piece of grass and I make it into a reed. Now, back to you playing a double reed. How does that work? Well, when I was a kid, I would sometimes sit in a field on a sunny day, there'd be blue sky, and I'd take two blades of grass and I would put it between my thumbs and I would blow across it and it would make this kind of a sound. And that's exactly what this double reed does. So if you've done that, you have totally played the oboe, or, well, at least a double reed. <laughs> now, if you haven't done that, then I encourage you, once it's summertime again, please go out and try that. Because what's happening is the two blades of grass are vibrating against each other and it's creating this vibration. Now, this piece of bamboo, I actually spend a lot of time with really, really sharp, sharp tools. And I take those tools and I make the reed. So I brought some of the sharp tools, like this sharp knife. And here is a mandrel. And I use these things to make the reed. Now, Making a reed on the oboe is really important. It's probably the thing I spend the most time doing. Um, and what oboe players do is we get to make all of our own reeds all of the time. Now, when you're learning the oboe, you can get your reeds from your teacher or buy them at a store. But as you become a better and better oboe player, you have to learn how to make these reeds. So, I'm gonna show you a little bit about how the oboe works. So this oboe 
is made of granadilla wood. Uh, it's, uh, the other name of it is um, African black wood. Um, and it's an incredibly dense wood. And uh, the reason it has to be so dense is because it has to get really, really small at the top. The inside of my oboe is quite small. It's like the size of a small straw. And on top of this granadilla wood are these silver keys. And these keys are the way that we change how the pitch works. So the vibration runs through, and depending on where you lift your finger, that's where the vibration escapes. So if I'm going to play the first finger here, that means that the vibration is escaping just below my finger. So I'm going to put my fingers down one on one, just like you would on a recorder. And you'll see that the pitch goes down. Conversely, when I pick my fingers up, so the pitch goes. So the lowest note you can play on the oboe, and that's the lowest note that's coming out the bottom here, it sounds like this. And the highest note, you might want to stand away from your speakers for this one. It's right up there. So we have quite a range of sounds that we can make on the instrument. I'd like to play some things for you so you can hear kind of what the oboe can do. Because although remaking is super important for the oboe, the thing that's most important is the music. So one of the things I love about playing the oboe is the long, luscious, romantic melodies that we get to play. So the oboe in the orchestra, uh, we get to play a lot of really beautiful, soulful solos. So I'm going to play one of those for you right now. Romantic. Something else that we can do is that we can sound um, really, really uh, operatic. What do I mean by the word operatic? I guess I mean singy. It sounds that we're singing. And that's one of my favorite things to do on the oboe. Let me play you something that demonstrates that. That is uh, Rossini's La Scala di Santa. In that same piece, there's this really cool part where we get to sound really pecky. And this next little part is supposed to depict a ladder. Um, let me show you. Let's see if you can hear where the ladder is. going up and down the ladder. It was in this part here. <laughs> the next thing I wanted to show you is sometimes the oboe can sound a little bit like water or a little bit like pebbles falling down, falling down a hill. Uh, this is a piece by Ravel and I want you to hear how um, I want you to hear how smooth everything can sound on the oboe. It's kind of the opposite of the climbing the ladder. So 
oh, did that feel, feel like I was running down a hill or I was water moving through, through um, some stones? That's something that we see a lot of in Saskatchewan. Something that sometimes I get asked um, when I'm traveling in classrooms is why did you pick the oboe? And I have to tell kind of a funny story, which is that I had never heard the oboe before I decided to play it, which seems odd. <laughs> in fact, I didn't really know anything about the oboe. I thought the oboe was really, really big. The reason I chose the oboe is I really, really liked the word. I mean, it's a cool word, oboe. O-B-O-E. It's a cool word. So there weren't any oboes where I grew up, so um, I had to send away for an oboe. So the first time I saw an oboe was when it arrived in the mail, um, and I opened it up. And I have to say, at that moment, there was like this light that came down over this oboe, and it, it, I felt like I was looking at my life's purpose. <laughs> I was 14 at the time, and I will never forget it. Um, I took that oboe out, and my parents said I didn't come out of my room for like weeks because I was just trying to figure out how to make this thing work. One of the things I love about playing the oboe is that it's very challenging. Um, it takes a lot of problem solving to play the instrument. I think you need a lot of problem solving for other instruments, but there are some basic uh, challenges of playing the instrument that other instruments don't encounter, and that's what I find really, really interesting about it. I did play other instruments before I started the oboe. Um, I started with piano, which is something that's really common, and I did a lot of singing. Um, I sang in a lot of choirs, and um, that allowed me to learn how to read music, which was great, and read rhythms, and so when I came to the oboe, I had a little bit more of an understanding. You don't have to do that. I've taught lots of people the oboe as their first instrument.